And joining us now to talk more about the Israel-Hamas war and American efforts to help is News Nation politics and economics contributor and former White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney. Mick, uh, thank you so much for being here tonight. Natasha, thanks for having me as always. Well, Senator Chuck Schumer said today the Senate is going to push an aid package through without waiting for the House. Given that the House is currently without a leader, is this empty talk from Schumer or is an aid package without House support feasible? No, an aid pack. two different questions. An aid package without the House support is not feasible. A new aid package would require the House and the Senate to agree, pass a piece of legislation and send it to the president, which he would obviously sign. But that doesn't mean that it's going to happen in the next couple of days or that the fact the House doesn't have a speaker is impeding the progress right now. Keep in mind, the Senate wasn't even in session last week. They didn't do anything on this. The House didn't do anything because they don't have a speaker. But when Chuck Schumer says we're going to have an aid package, it will take several weeks to pull that together. That would involve the Department of State, uh, the Department of Defense, possibly other cabinet secretaries and so forth. So it's not something that will happen tomorrow. So the House not having a speaker is a problem, but it's not impacting the policies on Israel yet. Okay. And based on your White House experience, I'm, I'm curious, what would your advice to President Biden be in this moment? He's actually doing pretty much exactly what I would hope that he would do. His language has been very, very good. Chuck Schumer's language has been very good. Many of the Democrats have been very solid on this. Keep in mind, this is an issue that can under certain circumstances, divide Democrats. That The Democrats are not necessarily as strong on Israel as the Republicans are generally. So to have the president come out as strong as he has, to have Schumer uh, come out as, as, as strengthfully as he, can, as he has, taking that bipartisan group to Israel, these are good signs and they're sending the right messages. That leads us then to the next step, which is what are the actions to back that up? The words have been really good up to now, Natasha. I couldn't change anything if I was advising the president. They did a nice job on that. Now the hard part comes is what does the action actually look like to back that up? It'll take us a couple weeks to find out. And and you mentioned a Democratic uh, reaction. What about on the GOP side? What are you tracking there? Are you satisfied with the reaction uh, you're seeing? We know that this weekend on the ground in New Hampshire, some GOP candidates taking aim at former President Trump for, for his remarks regarding Israel. Yeah, and this may be the one time, and again, people who have predicted Donald Trump's political downfall are, are, are always wrong, effectively, is where it comes down to. But you've seen him backpedal here over the course of the weekend. He came out very harshly against um, President Netanyahu, uh, or Prime Minister Netanyahu in Israel, came out saying nice things uh, about Hamas. Um, that's really, really dangerous territory, even for Donald Trump within the Republican Party. Within a Republican conversation, you can't be seen as being weak on Israel. So this is why you saw Donald Trump backpedal as quickly as he did. He never admits that he was wrong, but he has certainly changed his, his, um, his language over the course of the last 24 to 4 hours because I think he got off on the wrong foot and everybody knows it. Yeah, and I mean, we are looking at some um, really horrific images right now. The humanitarian crisis and certainly the, already the violence and loss of life that we've seen over the last eight days. I do want to ask you a question that is on a lot of Americans' mind, though, which is the economy. We know that the war in Ukraine had a, had a significant impact on the international economy. For example, increased gas prices that really squeezed many Americans. Do you expect we will see similar economic impacts from the Israel Hamas war? You certainly have that, that possibility, Natasha, especially if this goes longer or gets more broad geographically. Why do I say that? Uh, a couple years ago, uh, Iran was pumping about 400,000 barrels of oil a day. Today, it's doing about 3 million because of a change in policy between Trump and Biden. That's fine. But keep in mind, that extra oil has flowed to the international markets. So even we've seen the recent increase in prices of gasoline and oil, that's with larger Iranian production. If we decide to come in and sanction Iran because of their supposed participation in Hamas's efforts against Israel, that could have an impact on international oil prices, which will absolutely have an impact on both gas prices here and the larger economy. So yes, everything is just intertwined very, very tightly, and it's going to be a very difficult couple of months, I think, for folks all over the Western world. Okay, Mick Mulvaney, thank you so much for your time and insights. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.